Hello, today we will discuss a problem from current electricity. <coughs> we have a circuit in which uh, 720 ohm resistances are connected in parallel across a 2 volt uh, source. We have connected an ammeter up here and the question is to find the reading of the ammeter. So the system has 720 ohm resistors which are connected in parallel across a source of EM of 2 volt and uh, the ammeter is present here. Our question is to calculate the reading of the ammeter. So before proceeding with the solution, let us look at the working of an ammeter briefly. And we know that an ammeter is used for measuring the current in the circuit. And let us look at a simple circuit where we have a cell of EMF say 4 volt and a resistor of 2 volt. So straight away by using Ohm's law we can say that we can calculate the current in the circuit which is 4 by 2, 2 ampere. This is our current. Now to measure this current we are bringing an ammeter and we connect the ammeter here. Remember, the ammeter is always connected in series with the circuit. We have seen in a previous class that uh, the voltmeter is always connected in parallel. So your ammeter is connected in series with the two ohm resistor. Now, this ammeter is made by using a galvanometer. As in the case of the voltmeter, the heart of the ammeter is also a voltmeter. Sorry, a galvanometer. So, the galvanometer has got a some resistance. Say the resistance of the ammeter is assumed to be 1 ohm. We are assuming that the resistance of the ammeter is 1 ohm. Then what will be the current in the circuit? I, this 1 ohm will come in series with the 2 ohm. Therefore, the effective resistance of the circuit will be now 3 ohm. And the current in the circuit will be 4 by 3 ampere, which is approximately 1.33 ampere. How much was the current flowing in the circuit before we introduced the ammeter? 2 ampere. Now the introduction of the ammeter has reduced the current from 2 ampere to 1.33 ampere. And what is the reason for this? The reason is the resistance of the ammeter. And the resistance of the ammeter was in series with the resistor which is already present there. So the effective resistance of the resistance of the circuit increased. And that is the reason why there is a fall in the current in the circuit. Now how can we eliminate this or how can we minimize this error? By decreasing the resistance of the ammeter. The answer is very simple. You reduce the resistance of the ammeter, the effective resistance will be reduced and the current will increase. And uh, what should be the ideal value for the resistance of the ammeter for this reading to be exactly equal to 2 ampere? Zero. We know that uh, if you have an ammeter of zero resistance, then the reading of the ammeter will be exactly equal to 2 ampere, which is what we want. But that is not possible. You cannot have an instrument, you cannot have something with the zero resistance at room temperature. Therefore, this one will have some resistance. And uh, I told you that the heart of the ammeter is a galvanometer. And this galvanometer has some resistance. And that resistance should be reduced now. How can you reduce the value of a resistor without changing its physical dimensions? By putting another small resistance in parallel to it. You take a small resistor, connect it to parallel to the galvanometer, immediately the effect, the resistance of the galvanometer will be reduced. Because in parallel combination of two resistors, the effective resistance is always smaller than the smallest individual resistance. Let us say that the resistance of the galvanometer is G and the, resist, the value of the resistor that we have put in, put in parallel to the galvanometer, we will call this resistor by the name shunt. Let its value be S. I is the main current and it divides into two parts. The maximum safe current that can flow through the galvanometer is Ig 
and the rest will flow through the shunt which is I minus IG. Clear? I is the main current of which IG which is the maximum safe current that can flow through the galvanometer will flow through it and the remaining current I minus IG will flow through the shunt. Now if we look at these two points A and B, the galvanometer and shunt are connected in parallel across these two points. Therefore the potential difference across them should be the same. So we can write the potential difference across the galvanometer. We will write it here, which is IG into G should be equal to the potential difference across the resistor across the shunt, which is I minus IG into S, and from which we will get IG into G divided by I minus IG. This is how we calculate the value of the shunt. Ig into G by I minus I G. That will give you the value of the shunt. Is it clear? Okay. Now, let us discuss three questions. Similar to what we have discussed in the case of the voltmeter. You are given with the three type of ammeters. A milliammeter, a microammeter and an ordinary ammeter. Which one has the highest resistance? We have three different types of ammeters which are the a milliammeter, a microammeter and an ordinary ammeter. Milliammeter, microammeter and an ordinary ammeter. Of these three, which one has the highest resistance? So we have the formula for shunt which is S is equal to Ig into G divided by I minus Ig which we have just now obtained. And uh, the same galvanometer is used for constructing all the three ammeters, different varieties of ammeters. Then G is the same for all the three. And uh, since the galvanometers are the same for all the three instruments, the maximum safe current that can flow through them is also the same. So IG and G are the same for all the three. Is it clear? IG and G are the same for all the three and which is maximum, which is measuring the maximum current, a meter. So I is maximum for a meter. So I minus IG is maximum for a meter and S is minimum for a meter. So a meter has the minimum resistance. Clear? A meter has the minimum resistance. Why? Because I is maximum for a meter. I minus IG is maximum for a meter. So H should be minimum for a meter. Then the value should be more for milliammeter then maximum should be for microammeter so i is maximum for ammeter therefore s is minimum for ammeter then its value should be a little higher for milliammeter and it should be maximum for the microammeter is it clear okay now let us come to our problem in our problem we have seven resistors which are connected in parallel across a 2 volt source and the ammeter is connected here. Let us first calculate the effective resistance of this circuit. We assume that the resistance of the ammeter is negligible. That is why we say that all these resistances are in parallel across the 2 volt supply. We have 20 ohm, 7 20 ohm resistors which are in parallel. So what is the effective resistance R by N which is 20 by 7. Clear? 7 20 ohm resistors in parallel, therefore effective resistance in parallel is R by N, so 20 by 7. Then what is the current drawn from the source? 2 by ohm's law, 20 by 7, 14 by 20, which is equal to 7 by 10 ampere. So the current in the circuit is 7 by 10 ampere. Now look at the diagram. This 7 by 10 ampere current should be divided among 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 resistors equally. Remember, current always divides in the inverse ratio of resistances. Current divides in the inverse ratio of resistances. Here you have 20, 7, 20 ohm resistances. The value of the resistances are the same. So the division of current should be equal. You want to divide 7 by 10 ampere current equally to 7 resistors. So how much current will flow through one resistor? 1 by 10 ampere. You have 7 by 10 to be distributed among 7 equal resistances. So each resistor will get 1 by 10 ampere. 
So one by ten ampere should be flowing through this one. Another one by ten should be through this one. One by ten. Again through this one. One by ten. Through this one also one by ten. And through the last one also one by ten. So these are the currents that should flow through each resistor. Now look at your ammeter. Where is he situated at? He is here. So the current which were flowing through the first one, two, three, four resistances will not reach the ammeter. The current always flow through a closed path. So these currents which were flowing through the first four twenty ohm resistances will not reach the ammeter. Only the current that flows through the last three resistors will pass through the ammeter. Clear? The current which passes through the last three resistances will flow through the ammeter. What is the total current that flows through the last three resistances? One by ten plus one by ten plus one by ten, which is three into one by ten. So the reading of the ammeter will be point three ampere. Clear? The current which will pass through the last three twenty ohm resistances should flow through the ammeter. So last three resistances mean one by ten into three, which is point three ampere, and your reading should be point three. Now, if I had put the ammeter here, what would have been its reading? This ammeter, the current, main current, or the current which will flow through all the seven resistances should flow through the ammeter. Had the ammeter been here, so the reading would have been seven by ten, which is point seven. Here, it is point six. 0.5, 0.4, 0.3, which we have already seen, 0.2 and 0.1. So you find that as you move the ammeter from this point to this end, the reading will gradually decrease. Clear? Is it okay?